I'm Jordan and I'm worried about the climate. You should be too. This is an A to Z of some of the main issues around climate change. A is for awareness. Did you know that climate change is a greater threat than international terrorism? We all need to be aware of this. It's a really fundamental thing of, are we going to make the planet seriously unsustainable? For, for greenness, for butterflies, or for chemical factories. I mean, the whole darn thing might go down the pan, is the kind of feeling. B is for boilers. Boilers can account for up to 60% of our household emissions. So don't turn up the heating, put on more jumpers. C is for carbon emissions. Ugh. Carbon dioxide is the main greenhouse gas. And that's what's trapping the heat, or well, the excess of that is trapping the heat into the uh, atmosphere. Of course, it's the greenhouse gas effect that um, keeps us warm. If we didn't have that, the Earth would have a surface temperature of minus 18. It would be uh, quite cold. We've got to have it just right so it keeps this nice average living temperature. Mm. Most of the CO2 started increasing around about the 18th century when the Industrial Revolution kicked off. We started burning immense amounts of coal. Then, of course, into the 50s, we started driving a lot of cars and the world's population leapt from round about 1.6 billion at the turn of the 1900s through to now we've got 6 billion people. Yeah. So we are pumping more and more CO2 into the atmosphere and of course the temperature's going up. What are the government's targets towards carbon emissions? Government in Britain is very clear. Uh, reduce our emissions by 60% by 2050. Uh, the government is pushing on the international scale because we've got to get all countries to act. Mm. So we've been very keen to push Europe as a whole into action, but also all other countries, which is why the Prime Minister, during our G8 presidency, put climate change right at the top of the agenda. But what is a carbon footprint? A carbon footprint is sort of like a, a metaphor for the amount of carbon that you produce. So, in your given lifestyle through your year, you watch the TV, you wash your dishes in the dishwashing machine, yes. get maybe driven in the car, yeah. um, all the energy that's used there where it's producing CO2 mm. um, adds up and you can weigh it, it's measured in tonnes, your carbon footprint is, and average in the UK is around about 6.3 tonnes I think per mm. household and of course once you know what your footprint is, then it's kind of like checking your weight if you need to reduce weight. <laughs> D is for destabilisation. By the end of this century, rising sea levels and crop failures could create 150 million refugees. Even in Britain, 5 million people are at risk from increased floods and storm damage. E is for education. Why is it important to educate about climate change? Well, it's very important for your generation because uh, if we don't sort out this problem, we are going to leave your generation with an enormous problem to handle. I do think that your generation of teachers have largely, I'm afraid, been somewhere between inadequate and profoundly useless to you. I want you guys to say to yourselves, hang on, I, I want to be educated about all this. The difficulty is that you're at an age now where, to, to a striking degree, you will have to educate yourselves about it. I don't think you're in safe hands. S is for food. A third of our emissions comes from food miles. The third from our personal transport and the other third from household emissions. So, fruit and vegetables that we buy in the supermarket have got an average food mile of 4,300 miles. You can reduce your carbon footprint by buying locally produced food. G is for green. So, what is green? Green is having a great understanding of nature and the environment. And within the Green Party, we've got the Young Greens organisation. There's Friends of the Earth and Greenpeace both have uh, youth activities. And there's a great organisation called uh, People and Planet. Yeah. We're really good for kids. Green is logical. It saves you money. Green is a better way of life. Green is the way forward. H is for hybrid cars. A hybrid car is powered by an electric motor which takes over from the petrol engine at lower speeds. 
Driving a hybrid car reduces your carbon emissions and also reduces your fuel costs. Uh, Leonardo DiCaprio, Cameron Diaz, they drive Toyota yeah. Priuses, which are hybrids, and they are starting to set an example and a lot of their followers and fans are starting to get the message as well that you don't have to have, you know, 25 large vehicles in your garage to be considered cool. Hybrid cars are an option, not a solution. I'm going to stick to my bike. I is for ice. There has been a 40% drop in the amount of Arctic ice since the 1970s. Where this effect has spread and the northern ice fields melt, a rise in sea levels of up to 7 metres would occur. This would not simply overwhelm low-lying countries like Bangladesh, but also major western cities such as London, Rome and New York. J is for, well, Jordan. I was made DEFRA climate change champion for the South East last year. I've been to Switzerland, done speeches and even interviewed the Prime Minister at number 10. K is for Kyoto Agreement. The Kyoto Agreement was set up a number of years ago in order to gather all countries to agree to set targets and reduce their CO2 emissions. The important thing is that the nations get together to produce something that goes beyond 2012. The so-called G8 plus 5 process that the government initiated in, nine, in 2005 is so important. So we've got the leading nations in the world all sending their leaders to that meeting to discuss what we should do. That's going to happen in June this year. And I'm attaching a lot of importance to that, and so is the Prime Minister. L is for light bulb. M is for methane. 100 million cattle farting methane into the atmosphere make it the second biggest contributor to global warming. M is for natural disasters. Rising temperatures and disruption to the world's climate means that we are experiencing more natural disasters than ever before. People in low-income countries are four times more likely to die in natural disasters than people in richer countries. O is for oceans. Oceans cover approximately 70% of the Earth's surface, so any change in sea levels could have a dramatic global effect. Even here in Britain, rising sea levels may cause us problems. What we do know is if the Greenland ice cap melts and the Antarctic ice cap melts, we'll see enormous rises in sea level. So while you guys are still alive, this could be the map of England. And, uh, London's practically gone in this particular map. If sea levels rise due to our own actions, then we'll be making 80% of the world's population homeless. What's that? Peas for polar bears. Polar bears could be extinct by the end of the century. Q is for questions. Question everything. Why has climate change been allowed to happen? What can we do about it? What is green? What is CO2? Why are we recycling? How long will it take till the climate change affects us? R is for recycling. 6.5 million tonnes of litter finds its way into the ocean each year. So, recycle! S is for solar panels. Solar panels collect heat energy from the sun and use this to generate electricity. Solar panels on an average house could save your parents up to £125 each year. T is for transport. We need to reduce our footprint through travelling in cars. So travelling in groups, in taxis, public transport, on the train, on buses, considerably better. Now in London, 40% um, of households don't own a car. And that's because we've got decent public transport, because mm. there's good cycling facilities, because a lot of money has been put into this. That's what we need to see all around the country. We've got to invest in the alternatives, and then people are quite happy to get out of their cars and avoid air travel. It produces three times more carbon dioxide per passenger than going by train. You is for unbelievable. We could be in a truly unbelievable situation if we don't do anything about climate change. V is for vehicles. I've had a campaign going now called the Alliance Against Urban 4x4s for a few years 
Um, it's because of this big trend for people to move out of ordinary cars and into big 4 by 4s They're some of the most polluting cars around and they also have a huge effect on asthma rates. So um, I produce these uh, fake parking tickets. They say poor vehicle choice and they're full of like really useful information. Why would anybody now buy a large 4x4 four four with a big engine to drive around a town? I mean, it just seems really, really silly. W is for wind. Wind can be used to drive turbines, which in turn produce electricity. They can be used on land or at sea where it's windier. Wind energy is renewable, clean and cheap. A lot of people find wind turbines an eyesore and they worry that it might affect the landscape and horizon. Um, but we, we shouldn't lose sight of the fact that we all need energy to run our homes and so forth, and it has to come from somewhere. X is for extreme. Extreme weather, extreme temperatures, and extreme consequences are all possible because of climate change. So 2003 was the hottest summer ever in Central Europe, and 30,000 people lost their lives. I can imagine, because, you know, I've read science fiction, this planet would be reduced to a place in which, say, only two billion people can live comfortably instead of nine or ten. Now, I don't think that scenario is likely, but what, what do I know? What do any of us know? So, when your grandchildren say to you, you didn't do much about climate change, you may say, yeah, isn't it? Like it didn't turn out to add up to much. Or you might say, yeah, sorry, we listened to this old duffer who said we'll probably muddle our way through. Why is for you. But what can you do about it? It's up to you to do something about it. Young people are more informed about climate change than adults. Mm. Um, and so you've got great capacity to influence your friends, particularly your families. If you could to give a child of my age three things to just you know, begin to improve their green ways, what would you say to well, do? Uh, don't keep asking mum to drive you to school. Yeah. Walk or cycle. Two would be switch off lights when you leave a room. Mm. Three, never leave anything on standby. Said is for zero tolerance. Do you think that we need a zero tolerance approach to climate change? What I prefer is that we all commit ourselves to reducing emissions of carbon dioxide. Mm. And this means that those people who reckon it's smart to drive around in a Ferrari, yeah. you know, emitting a lot of carbon dioxide, it's almost deliberate to demonstrate you're very rich and so you don't mind how much fuel you use and you don't mind how much you destroy the planet. Somehow we need to change the whole culture. Definitely. And that, by the way, is a boy thing. Ego, big ego needs to be cut down really, as well as the emissions. I think we all need to recognise as we move through this century, we have to take greater care of the planet. Um, and your generation are going to have to sort out a lot of problems that we will leave for you. Mm. It's not complicated, so take some responsibility and be prepared to make some changes. We can all make a difference. Mm.